Picture this. It's the 1940s, and the world just witnessed the devastating power of the atomic bomb. Cities leveled, history changed forever. You'd think humanity would stop there, right? Wrong. Because not too long, some idiot rubbed their two brain cells together and said, what if we made something even more destructive? And I guess they loved the idea so much that, seven years later, the hydrogen bomb was born. A nuke so powerful it makes the atomic bomb look like a joke. But what makes this bomb tick? Why do we need two ways of blowing stuff up? And how does a 10-foot piece of metal make a whole city disappear? Let's rewind to where it all started. Gunpowder. Back in the day, if you wanted to make something explode, you didn't exactly have a lot of options. Somewhere in China around the 9th century, alchemists were trying to make an elixir for eternal life. But instead of immortality, they accidentally created mortality on demand. They mixed sugar, spice, and everything nice, lit it up, and got gunpowder. To their credit, they used it to make fireworks at first. But pretty soon, someone had the idea. Hey, what if we use this stuff to blow up people instead? The result? Early bombs, basically hollow bamboo or metal tubes stuffed with gunpowder. They weren't city leveling, but they got the job done creating chaos. Fast forward a few centuries, and we've got grenades. A hollow iron ball filled with gunpowder and lit with a fuse. They were clunky, dangerous to use, and just as likely to blow up the thrower. But they were effective. But that wasn't enough for us. So in 1863, along came TNT. Invented by a German chemist who used it as a clothes dye, which caused several thousand deaths due to its then unknown toxicity, its explosive potential was discovered later on. It turned out to be way better at blowing stuff up. Unlike gunpowder, it didn't explode just because you looked at it funny. It was stable, safe to handle, relatively speaking, and packed a bigger punch. And that's when the real chaos began. Eventually, we got bored blowing stuff up with chemicals. So we figured out how to do it with atoms. But what even is an atom? Atoms are like tiny Lego pieces that make up everything. You, me, a banana. At their center is the nucleus, kind of like the VIP section of a nightclub, full of protons and neutrons just chilling. The electrons? They're the crowd outside, orbiting the club, trying to look important. Now, here's the thing about the nucleus. It's held together by this ridiculously strong force, which means the protons and neutrons are stuck together. But if you somehow crack open that nucleus, you get a big explosion. That's how an atomic bomb works. Kinda. You start with some really radioactive, unstable stuff, like uranium-235. Basically, it's one step away from a meltdown. You take a chunk of this metal and smack it with a neutron. The nucleus splits and releases a ton of energy. But here's the kicker. That split also releases more neutrons, which go on to split more atoms, creating a chain reaction. This is called nuclear fission. And then in 1945, the worst happens. The U.S. has two atomic bombs named Little Boy and Fat Man. Because apparently when you invent weapons of mass destruction, you also get to name them like weird carnival prizes. On August 6th, Little Boy is dropped on Hiroshima, Japan. Within seconds, the city is destroyed, and over 70,000 people lose their lives. Three days later, Fat Man is dropped on Nagasaki, with similar catastrophic results. This events lead to Japan's surrender, World War II ends, and the world collectively goes, we probably shouldn't let this happen again. But here's the thing. Once you invent something like the atomic bomb, you can't uninvent it. It's like lighting a fuse and hoping the explosion never comes. And once again, humanity took it a step further with the hydrogen bomb. Think of it as an atomic bomb, but on steroids. Instead of splitting atoms, the H-bomb fuses them, aka nuclear fusion. This releases an enormous amount of energy. But here's the catch. Hydrogen atoms don't just fuse together casually. They need ungodly amounts of heat and pressure to fuse. We're talking temperatures like the center of the sun, millions of degrees. So what do you do when you don't have a spare star lying around? You take an atomic bomb, surround it with deuterium and tritium, isotopes of hydrogen, in simple terms, its evil twins, and detonate the atomic bomb. That gives the hydrogen atoms the heat to fuse and cause a second, way bigger explosion. It's basically a bomb inside a bomb. And then there's Tsar Bomba. In 1961, the Soviets decided to flex harder than anyone else and drop the biggest hydrogen bomb ever tested, powerful enough to destroy a small country. Take Little Boy, multiply its power by 3,333, and you've got Tsar Bomba. The explosion was so massive that even if you were far enough to survive, the shockwave will still mess you up. It's just overkill on a ridiculous scale. We've got these bombs. They're way too powerful. And for some reason, we still keep them around. 
probably because it's better to have them and not use them than to need them and not have them. Unnecessary, right? Subscribe.